So this season hasn't quite gone exactly the way we all want it to. So for today's video, I decided why not start talking about the draft? I mean, no one else is, so why don't I be the first one to start doing it? So we're going to be breaking down first round draft targets as Mel Kuyper put out his top 25 big board for the 2024 NFL draft. And I'm going to give you the 10 uh, targets that I think the Saints should draft according to Mel Kuyper. But guys, before we get into that, I encourage you to subscribe for Saints dra draft content, excuse me, ahead of the 2024 NFL draft. We're going to be bringing you coverage all throughout the regular season and the offseason and leading up to the draft. We may even be able to go live this year. We weren't able to go live last year, but with more subs, that could be a possibility. But first things first, let's discuss the team needs here. Because I think if you want to talk about this kind of thing, you can't just blindly throw up a list of names and just be like, yeah, these are the guys that the team needs. Well, that's not the case for every single team. So let's talk about what New Orleans needs. So the definite needs, like the ones you have to address this offseason, whether it's free agency, trades, or draft. Edge rusher, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, offensive guard, wide receiver, and linebacker. It's a lot of positions you need to go get. Potential needs. These are more luxury picks or like if you have the opportunity, I would go and add these kind of players. Quarterback, running back, safety, cor or quarterback, excuse me, running back, corner, and uh, center. And if the New Orleans Saints, uh, or if the draft was today, the New Orleans Saints would pick number 12 right now. So don't shoot the messenger on this. The reason that it's a potential need, I said that this, uh, I don't think the Saints are going to draft a quarterback in round one. Look at the history. They love drafting in the trenches. They love drafting wide receivers. They love drafting all these other players. They don't draft quarterbacks in the first round. I'm not saying that they won't. I just don't think that they will. I do want them to, but I don't think they will. Derek Carr has one more season under contract. It would cost them way too much money. They'd, lo they'd actually be losing more money cutting him than keeping him next year so that's just why this is all, all going to go down so I don't think that the Saints are going to draft a quarterback round one again I want them to but don't shoot the messenger we're still going to talk about a couple quarterbacks though but I want you to be the GM be the head coach put on the headset Saints fans what's the biggest need in the NFL draft that you want to address just give me the position give me the player give me whatever you want in the comment section but it's your turn to sound off so let me know all right, without further ado, let's dive into Mel Kuyper's top 10 targets for the New Orleans Saints. And we're going to start off in the trenches, just like I said a second ago. Joe Alt, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. Now, listen to this. He's 90.8 PFF grade, 84.8 run blocking grade, 92.2 pass blocking grade, and has allowed one sack. He mirrors well. He has great technique. And at six foot eight, he is massive now coming up we have a lot more draft targets we have nine other ones some offensive linemen some wide receivers some uh defensive players and a couple of quarterbacks but before we get into that i want to give a mad shout out to prize picks prize picks is so much fun it's daily fantasy sports made easy and you can get started at prizepicks.com clns and use that promo code clns for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars if you ever heard of Meek Mill, Andrew Schultz, yeah, those two guys love prize picks. But me, I'm addicted to prize picks. And I'm really sorry to my girlfriend that I may not be able to get you a better Christmas present this year because I just keep losing money on prize picks. But here's my thing. It's not because prize picks is hard. It's because I'm bad at it. I love prize picks. It's so much fun. I'm not kidding. In the morning, I'll hop up, check my phone, go through Twitter, all that, and be like, now nah, let's put in a couple of quick projections. For this week, today, this morning, I took more for Jared Goff passing yards. I just think the Lions are going to absolutely flame the Saints this weekend. Jalen Hurts, give me a tush push. I just need one tush push. The Broly shove one time, and that's going to hit for me. And then Christian McCaffrey, half a receiving touchdown or half a rushing touchdown? Yeah, I'm taking that. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use promo code CLNS for that first deposit match up to $100. All that information is in the comment section and description of this video. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, sticking in the trenches, J.C. Latham. He is an offensive tackle out of Alabama. Mel Kuyper has him as his number 19th rank, overall ranked player um, in, the, uh, in the big board. He has a 79.4 PFF grade, one sack allowed this season, six hurries, uh, and he's six foot six, 360 pounds. Trevor Penning hasn't panned out. He hasn't been good, 
Andrus Pete is filling in as a tackle. Ryan Ramchek is getting old. Like, like you just got to call a spade a spade. So one of these two guys, I think, are a must grab if they fall to you, the Saints. Keon Coleman, though, what about going and getting the special or a special wide receiver talent? 46 receptions, 639 yards, 11 touchdowns, and just under 14 yards per catch for the Seminole. He is a great football player, also played at Michigan State. I'd love to see him in the black and gold. Leitu Latu, if I butchered the pronunciation, I apologize, Saints fans, and I apologize, UCLA fans, but he is a stud. Here's my thing. Latu was possibly the best edge rusher in 2022. He was incredible. First in total pressures with 55 and first in pressure percentage at 19.1. He's a polished pass rusher, naturally uh, slips by offensive tackles, and he had three strip sacks in 2022, and he already has two this season. Leitu Latu could be a big-time replacement for Demario Davis, Zach Bond, or any, anybody on that linebacker room. Let's stay in the boot, though, Saints fans. I can't not make a draft video and talk about some LSU players. I mean, come on now. Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver phenomenon out of LSU, 86 receptions on the year so far, 1,546 yards, 14 touchdowns, 18.0 yards per catch. Holy cow, Neighbors is a freak. But I want you, Saints fans, to pick a wide receiver for me. If you like Keon Coleman, the Florida State Seminole, type KC. If you like Malik Neighbors, give me an MN in the uh, comment section. I feel like I'm going to see a lot of Malik Neighbors in the chat. I wonder why. Saints, LSU, same state. So not ranked. I want to go ahead and bring this point up. Mel Kuyper did not have Jane Daniels in his top 25. He is ranked as the number four quarterback behind Drake May, or behind Caleb Williams, Drake May, Shadur Sanders, and then it's Jane Daniels. So that is that. I wanted to give you guys that heads up. That doesn't mean we're not talking about him, though. So Dallas Turner, I encourage you to stick around if you want to hear some Jane Daniels talk. I, I just, you know what's going to come here at the end. Dallas Turner, he is an excellent edge rusher for Alabama. He shows flashes of stellar pass rush moves, really good at shedding blocks for, or at shedding run blocking, and he ranks 12th in the FBS with a 15.5% pressure rate. Now let's stick with uh, the Tide. Big win over Auburn this past weekend. Kool-Aid McKinstry might be a good addition to the Saints back uh, to the Saints defense. Possibly, I mean, not possibly. Definitely the best name in all of the uh, all of the draft. I mean, that name rocks. That's a great name. I love Kool-Aid. Comment your favorite Kool-Aid flavor in the comment section. I'm a grape guy. That's just me. But Kool-Aid McKinstry has special teams value. He's not just a good cornerback. He um, does only have two interceptions over the past three seasons. This year, though, he does have six pass breakups. And I will say this. The Saints are good at developing uh, defensive backs. And they're develop good at developing defensive talent. Now, if Dennis Allen doesn't stick around, maybe that is a hard pick to make because you don't have the development there. But here's my thing. Kool-Aid McKinstry is a good football player, and he could make a good impact on the Saints' defense. Brock Bowers. Dude, this guy is special. He is a generational talent. 51 receptions, 661 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 13 yards per catch. Like I just said, Bowers is generational. Here's my one thing about this. If Brock Bowers falls to you, you take him. You have to draft him. I understand you have Juwan Johnson. I understand you have Taysom Hill. I understand Foster Morrow's on the roster. Jimmy Graham, probably not going to be around next year. My thing, though, you will never get to see a player of this caliber at the tight end possession for a long time. You will not get to see a player like Brock Bowers. Kyle Pitts was a generational talent. Look what the Falcons did. They drafted him. The Falcons stink. I know that they just beat the Saints, but they stink, and that's why he struggles over there. If he was at a competent football team that knew how to use a tight end, I think that he would be excellent in this league. So go get Bowers if you can. But I told you we'd talk about Jane Daniels because I'm a man of my word and I keep my promises. Jane Daniels was not ranked by Mel Kuyper in his top 25. Like I said, the number four quarterback to Kuyper. And number five in that ranking, Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback for Washington. Now, let's take a deeper look at these two players side by side. Let's talk about the numbers, talk about the impact. Now, Jaden Daniels, I know Saints fans, I don't even have to talk much about him. The numbers speak for themselves, the tape speaks for themselves. But for those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar with Michael Penix, 
He is a special talent. He has a great arm. He's scary accurate. Almost 4,000 yards, more passing yards um, than Jane Daniels. Less touchdowns, more interceptions, obviously. And the QBR is lower. But Michael Penix is not a name to just gloss over. I understand the homer take. I understand that you guys love the LSU Tiger. You want the homecoming. You want to keep the kid in the boot. But Michael Penix is also a talented football player. And when you took a look at more numbers of them side by side, Jane Daniels sacked 22 times. Michael Penix only sacked eight. I find this pretty interesting. Now, the rushing numbers are wildly skewed, and they heavily favor Jane Daniels. So me just making an argument for Michael Penix, I know you guys are just going to look at these numbers and be like, nah, what the hell are you talking about, Trace? You don't know what you're saying. You're just trying to tell us about another guy. Well, Penix is also a good football player, but the minus 14 rushing yards, a lot of QB kneels and that kind of stuff, three rushing touchdowns. But holy shit, Jane Daniels has over 1,100 rushing yards. The season's, you know, this season was great for him. He is a Heisman contender, 10 rushing touchdowns. What a stud. But guys, I need you to pick one to draft for me. If you are on the clock right now, both of these two cats are available. Would you pick Jane Daniels or Michael Penix? My one caveat, Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael, or I guess Pete Carmichael most so. Pete Carmichael can't be running the offense if you take one of these two guys. They got to fire him. Either way, they have to fire him. But if one of these two guys are around and, Jay, and uh, Pete Carmichael is the OC, it's Jover. Sorry, y'all. But, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's content. I hope you enjoyed today's show. As always, be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much, no matter where you are or how you're tuned in. We're going to be keep giving you guys draft coverage throughout the rest of the season and through the offseason. So if you want more awesome coverage, be sure to subscribe. Y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time.